I, I do sense um, there's like new ways of doing that is coming through for you. This can be like, you know, for example, in the past, you have always, always enjoyed volleyball. All of a sudden you feel like, oh, I don't know why, but I can't even bring myself to play anymore. I can't even bring myself to, you know, look at it anymore, like to even think about playing volleyball anymore, for example. So it's, it's kind of like your tastes have t taken like some kind of drastic changes or you're evolving in a new direction. So you're, you're feeling as if you're say the previous things that you enjoy, they don't bring you the same levels of enjoyment anymore. And this can, you know, extend across relationships as well, where you feel as if I just don't like the same things that I, I used to in the past. Okay. So that's uh, one way I feel that this can come out. And I do sense as well that all of a sudden you might see somebody in a new light or you might see a situation in a new light and you might feel as if, you know, I want something else for my life. So overall, this sense of dissatisfaction, but also, you know, looking in a different direction or at least waiting on something that is you feel is meant for you. So I feel like on a, a subconscious or on an intuitive level, you feel as if, you know, your old way of life might be coming to an end. And as a result of it, you're kind of looking out in the horizon, waiting for the next thing to come into your life. So I'm going to say that, you know, it is Mercury in retrograde and um, it, it does bring up weird energy. So if you're going through this and you don't really know where that sense of longing or dissatisfaction either or is coming from, I would say, you know, wait until the end of the Mercury retrograde cycle to implement anything new. Okay. So that is going to come in on January 25th, but then we do have the shadow period two weeks after. So just, um, wait around for it to make sure that you, you, you haven't changed your mind because I feel that the Mercury retrograde, it does bring about muddled thinking. And then, you know, when it ends, we will revert back to our old self. So it might resolve itself, the, the problems or that sense of innate longing or dissatisfaction or wanting to do something out of your comfort zone is coming through. And then you might, you know, it, it might just like be a fleeting influence. So either way, just uh, approach the situation very carefully. So let's go into the spread I've laid out here. Now let's look at the crowning energy. And once again, I do feel, you know, that sense of temptation is definitely in the air. Okay. The crowning energy is the seven of swords. And this is somebody who has taken something and has snuck away. And in the reverse position, this indicates to me that um, there is something that you're dealing with where someone is not telling you the whole truth or they're doing something they're not supposed to. This can be a friend telling you, for example, that, um, they cheat, they're cheating on their spouse or on their significant other. It can be a person in your work environment who has, you know, stolen from the company. It can play out in a myriad of ways. And I do feel, you know, uh, you're a fire sign. You have a very big network of friends and associates. So I'm, I feel that this is just something that is in your environment. And once again, it's a sword energy. So it could be an air sign. Air, air signs are, um, Aquarius, Gemini, Libras, and you know, there might be talks coming in about this air sign. There might be rumors and things like that, or there might be, you know, just physical evidence of something coming through possibly uh, from an air sign. Okay. So this is the energy that you're dealing with for this month. Be very careful about once again, that sense of temptation, this temptation. Okay. It can come in from you, for you or from your partner, but I want you to just be aware of this temptation and it's in the reverse position. So it indicates to me that if you were to act on it, it wouldn't be in your best interest, first of all. So, you know, a temptation can be, you know, trying cigarettes for the first time, for example. If you were to take it up now, I, I don't feel that it would be good for you. So it's just some sense of temptation, wanting something and, um, feeling as if, if you were to go for it, you might get in trouble as a result. So just be very careful. I feel like this is something permeating in your spread. Okay. So just be careful about that. In terms of the past position, we have the four in the reversed. Okay. 
the four in the reverse is basically doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. Now, this might be why there is temptation to do something new. And I do feel the new thing is actually going to pan out really well for you. We have several cards here that are corroborating the same things. It's telling you to break out of your comfort zone. It's telling you that, you know, the old ways of doing are no longer serving you. So your soul is kind of reaching out and, and searching for that new thing. And you feel as if, oh, I can't really accept this new thing because it's, um, it's risky. So there's an element of risk, but also, you know, really big rewards coming as a result of it too. But I'm going to say, you know, try to be ethical, try to be moral when you look at the situation, okay? A lot of you might be dealing with this on different fronts, but like I said, there are action and consequences. So if this pertains specifically to a love relationship, which I feel like for a lot of you it might be, uh, there is karma. What goes around comes around. So, you know, don't step out of the relationship. And likewise, whoever has been stepping out, out of the relationship, I do feel there is going to be actions and consequences as well. So, you know, just think about this in a logical manner, okay? There are big risks and also really big payouts, but we also want to temper this with a sense of morality, a good moral compass as well. So I hope that makes sense. Now, in terms of your present situation, we have the Four of Cups, and the Four of Cups is basically um, getting offers from people around you and deciding that, okay, the offers are not exactly meeting my expectations, but I think I'm going to go with it. So you're actually taking a, a risk here. So in the past, you've been doing things over and over again and expecting different results. And now you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're taking a risk. And I do feel, or at least, you know, you, you're going to go with something. So something that has been on the offing that you wouldn't have take up, taken up in the past, you're now taking up on that offer. What's crossing it is the Eight of Swords, which is a little bit of an uncomfortable energy for an Aries. This indicates a sense of restriction, freedom of movement, um, lack of freedom of movement, excuse me, and also it's a state of confusion, and it's a state where, you know, should I or shouldn't I? So you're still dealing with this little conflict. So the foundation, though, we do have the Queen of Swords, and the Queen of Swords is basically... Oh, some a figure in your life who is very, very logical. This can be represented um, by an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And it's really interesting. Um, Pisces got the same card in the same position, except for Pisces is in the reverse position. Whereas for you, I feel that the foundation as the Queen of Swords is somebody who's very logical, who is who does, you know, the the uh, cost benefits analysis very thoroughly before she makes a decision. So this can be you or, or somebody that you're dealing with, but I do feel that the foundation is so strong here. So if you are compelled to take a risk, um, and I hope it's not in, you know, stepping out of the relationship or anything like that, but I do feel, you know, the strong message for you is that you've done a lot of the groundwork, the background research, that whatever venture you undertake is going to be phenomenal in the outcome, okay? In terms of what's coming in for you, we do have the moon. And once again, this is a card about confusion as well. In this deck, I'm getting a different read from the moon. And I do feel, you know, this is like a personal enjoyment, going on dates, letting your hair down, and, you know, not feeling so burdened and, and just... Um, Feeling free. This is a card about enjoying the things that the universe has to offer. And this is usually in, you know, nature, music, love, friendships, and you know, basking in the glow of the moon where you feel like everything is going to be okay, where you feel at peace with yourself, and where you found your life's calling, I feel. It's just, it seems to me as if, you know, with the Eight of Swords crossing you, you were in a state of confusion. You took this risk and now you're in a very, very good place. So you're thinking to yourself, you know, life does not get any better than this. So the advice here, we do have the strength card. And the strength card indicates to me that a lot of you are definitely headed in the right direction. And I do feel that, you know, whatever newfound, um, this newfound interests, newfound found projects that you've taken up, 
that was really, really, you know, different from what you were used to in the past, you're going to make the most of it. And it's also a card about um, flirtation in this deck, okay? This is a, a highly seductive card. For some reason, I'm sensing in this deck. Not so much in the Rider Weight deck, because that's more about uh, strength, speaking out, self-empowerment. In this deck, it's more about coaxing someone. Uh, it's more about um, seduction. And I do sense that, you know, with the Moon card, it does indicate seduction. Both of these cards indicate, you know, enjoying time together, possibly alone time together, and really enjoying somebody's company where they make you feel as if, they make you feel attractive, they make you feel really, really good about, you know, where you are in life, and you feel as if you're in control of your life. So I definitely feel that for a lot of you, um, I I'm sensing as well, a lot of you might be, might be dealing with a temptation, okay? So, if that's the case, then you know what the right thing to do is. But for those of you who are just um, tired of, you know, people from your past who have not really followed through with things, left you hanging, they promised you to go on a date and then they kind of leave you hanging or business partners and things like that. I definitely feel that you're taking charge and you're able to move out and really enjoying your, your time either, you know, with new love interests, new partnerships, but either way, I, I feel that for a lot of you, that sense of, you know, enjoyment is coming back into your life. In terms of the external environment, we do have the judgment card. This is a really beautiful card, and it indicates to me new beginnings in life and love, okay? So this is a situation where the past can no longer be gone back to. So if you've been, you know, if, if there's that sense of, you know, change in taste, change in habits, change in preferences is coming through, then you're going to be quite satisfied and pleased with it. So I, I feel like, you know, a lot of the times we might have like, uh, and this is a simplistic example, but I, I'm, I'm using it just, you know, to illustrate my point. A lot of the times we might be drawn to certain food. For example, you know, we've been eating, I don't know, tuna sandwiches for the past three months. And then all of us for the past, you know, for as long as we could remember. And all of a sudden we just feel like, oh, I, I used to like that so much, but I don't like it anymore. It's because, you know, your soul is evolving and it needs a, a different kind of nutrition. It needs different nutrients. It needs something else. So your soul is trying to tell you, you know, I'm growing. I need like sustenance. Or like you might have like a specific type of music and all of a sudden you just feel like, oh, scrap that. I don't want to listen to that anymore. I used to like it so much and I don't know why. And I, f I usually feel as if um, a lot of the times we surround ourselves with different people. We also absorb their energies and their energies also affect us on a soul level as well. So if we're surrounded by good people, we tend to enjoy, you know, the, the simpler things in life, I feel, because the good people bring about very meaningful conversation where you feel like, okay, I don't have to go to a bar and get drunk just to dance off the night and, you know, have fun. I can just sit here, enjoy, you know, quiet music and have good conversation with good people. So changes in taste and preferences are usually indicative of spiritual ascension where your soul is is growing and it's growing in a very positive direction, I feel. So take heed about that, okay? I also feel that with the moon, it also indicates the dream state. So a lot of you might have... Um, might lucid dreams, might have vivid dreams, might even um, astral travel, for example. But I, I do sense that your soul is yearning for some kind of newness, okay? So if you're not doing that, if you're stagnating, then your soul is going to um, travel at night. So, you know, not to scare you or anything, but I do feel that your soul needs some kind of nurturance. And if you're able to do new things in your life, to help your soul grow is going to be so much better for you because I do feel that new beginnings are coming through for you. And at least it's in the uh, position of the external environment. So it means that even if you've held yourself back before, there are going to be ample opportunities for you to pursue the, th the things that you're very, very passionate about, okay? In terms of your hopes and fears, we do have the lovers in the reverse position. And I feel this is one of those things where um, actions and consequences are going to be 
of paramount importance for the next two weeks for you, starting on the 15th, okay? Because with the lover's card in the reverse, it's kind of like a situation, a partnership, or even a relationship that we feel we've outgrown. And it could be, you know, just, um, it, it, the person might be the greatest person in the world, but for some reason you don't have that, that strong connection anymore and you want something else in your life. Or they likewise might want something else. So I feel that for a lot of you, there might be a um, situation where you're reconnecting with somebody. If the relationship has been rocky, you feel as if, okay, I'm, I have to give this my all and maybe there's a way for me to salvage this relationship. And in terms of the outcome, I feel that it's um, it can go, you know, one of two ways, okay? And I feel like two, um, this is speaking specifically to two very different um, Aries. And I do sense that for the first one, if there has been, you know, situations where you're dealing with infidelity, theft, and things like that, the relationship or the friendship or the association is going to come to an end. And as a result of that end, we have the wheel of fortune in which, you know, the universe says that, okay, you're looking for something new. I'm going to give you something new. And as a result of that, we have the ace of cups, which is indicative of new love. Okay. New things that will bring us a lot of emotional fulfillment. So for a lot of you, if you've been dealing with that and you're still going back to that same relationship partner, the universe is ushering you a new a new thing that is going to bring you a lot of emotional stability, fulfillment. So it can even be a work relation, um, a work environment as well. Although in this spread, I'm not sensing a lot of work, but I de definitely sense a lot of invitations for, you know, going out, going to music venues, going out and having a really good time. As a result of that as well, external to you is basically new dating opportunities for those of you who are single. For a lot of you who are in long established relationships, if you feel like something has been lacking in your relationships, if you feel that, um, if you're tempted to step outside of the relationship, I also feel that you might want to, you know, not do that. And also, especially not do that during Mercury and retrograde because you are going to be found out, okay? It's um, is notorious for secrets coming to light. So just be very careful about that. But either way, I feel that newness is definitely in the cards for you. And it, at least it's in the surrounding environment. I also feel if you're hoping to, you know, re-inject passion into a long-established relationship, there is going to be a new lease on love. This is, you know, that, that time period where you are um, starting to feel that maybe, you know, I'm, maybe I'm not whole by myself. So I need to take some time off and work on myself and, you know, get myself emotionally stable and grounded in order for me to re-enter this relationship or rework this relationship or become a better relationship partner. Or there might be opportunities for you through, you know, music, dance, and, and things like that, that where you can reconnect with your partner. So either way, this is going to be a very, very romantic and emotionally stable and just um, a very he emotionally healing time period for the next two weeks, okay? Um, I also sense as well, there is a great, great temptation going on in this spread, okay? So um, if you are not happy with your relationship, just have the, you know, if, if you, you're, I feel like this is more for you, Aries, okay? So if you're not happy with your relationship, do something about it or, you know, try to fix it or at least have an honest discussion. Maybe you can take a break. Maybe you can, you know, um, break off altogether or do something to re-inject the passion in the relationship because I, I feel like the external environment is not that people are tempting you. It's just that you have so many contacts all around you that wherever you turn, there's like temptation, okay? And, you know, when it comes to these temptations, we everyone has to deal with it. But managing it in a way that doesn't hurt other people, that doesn't create bad karma, 
is going to be very important for all of us as human beings, okay? So be the catalyst of change in your own life, but don't hurt other people as a result, all right? So that's the um, strong message I'm, I'm sensing for you, Aries. I feel a lot of temptations, a lot of new energies coming through, and you're going to be hit left and right by suitors for those of you who are single. Um, I also feel as well as the foundation here, we have the Queen of Swords. And the Queen of Swords is all about truth, honesty, and um, this is a, a card that is greatly about communication, okay? So for those of you who are giving, you know, speeches and things like that, and you, you might be in a situation where uh, stage fright is setting in and you don't really feel like you're the expertise, you're going to be okay because fortune is shining upon you. So you are going to be very well received for those of you who are doing any type of a public speaking venture, all right? So I do wish you the best.